Here we'll be looking into what we refer to as the IV characteristics or current voltage characteristics of three really important components, a resistor, a filament lamp and an LED or a, more generally a diode. Um, so what we mean by an IV characteristic is the way in which current and voltage vary across some components. So if we vary one, what will happen to the other? Uh, so first off, we'll just quickly look at how we would measure it. Uh, so it's fairly straightforward to, if we have some power supply, probably one which is going to be variable so that we can adjust the voltage. We have this coming through some ammeter, connected up to our component. So here I've just put in a resistor. This can then come back up to the start of the power supply and in order to get the voltage across this component we can stick a voltmeter across it. So here as we vary the uh, power supply we can see what happens to the current passing through this component and to the voltage across it. And the other components that we might be looking at are a filament lamp which looks like this. So we have a circle with a cross through it compared to a rectangle for a resistor and the symbol for a diode looks something like this. Sometimes this will have a circle around it and if it's light emitting then we have something like this coming off of it. Uh, so we'll start off by having a look at a resistor. So what we ultimately want to do, the way we show these IV characteristics is in a graph. So we'll have something like a current voltage graph. And for a resistor, it's fairly straightforward. If we have a look at Ohm's law, V equals I R. If we rearrange this to make I the subject, we can have I is equal to V over R. And we can see that what we've got here is roughly equivalent to having this I as our Y and this V as our X and then this 1 over R is going to be Rm. So this Y is I, X is V, and this M is the 1 over R. And so that means that what we expect due to Ohm's law, uh, which does tend to apply to a resistor when we're at constant temperature, is that we get a straight line and the gradient will be 1 over the resistance. So we're going to get a straight line like this. So this might be for a resistor with say resistance 1 kilo ohm. So the gradient of this would be 1 over the resistance or 1 over 1 kilo ohm. Uh, but what we might get for a different resistor, so if we have a uh, resistor with only 470 ohms as its value of resistance, then we, the gradient is 1 over a smaller number, so the gradient is going to be steeper. And so we would get again a straight line, but it's going to be uh, at a steeper value. In this case, the gradient is going to be almost exactly twice as much. Similarly, if we had a larger one, so if we had a 2.2k resistor, uh, then we would have a shallower gradient here. So 1 over the resistance for the gradient. Uh, for a filament lamp, uh, if we consider that in a filament lamp we have some wire, we have a coil of this wire and then it goes out, that is essentially still just a resistor. Um, and so we might expect that on a current voltage graph we would get exactly the same thing as we had on our last page. We would just get a perfectly straight line. So let's sketch that in and put up the equation we had on the last slide as well. So I equals V over R. But the filament, uh, but Ohm's law only applies when we're looking at uh, some resistor or some component that's at constant temperature. And with a filament lamp, as we start to ramp up the current that's passing through it, what we see is it starts to glow, and it glows because it's getting very hot. And uh, we'll see 
in a future video what happens when we change the temperature of uh, metals, what happens to their resistance. Um, uh, but in summary what happens is as they get hotter the resistance increases. So what we're going to see is that as the current goes up the resistance is also going to go up. But because the gradient is 1 over the resistance that means that therefore the gradient is going to go down. So as the current increases the gradient is going to decrease and so we'll start off with a fairly steep gradient so if we at the start we'll see something similar to what we would have expected with the resistor but what happens as the current starts to heat up the filament lamp the filament in the lamp the gradient is going to get shallower because the resistance is increasing and so instead of this straight line what we see is we see a curve off like this so as the current increases the gradient gets shallower on here so uh, as we increase the current we need increasingly more voltage so the voltage increases at a faster rate than that at which we increase the current so we get this curved shape for a filament lamp instead of the straight lamp that we got for the resistor uh, the final component that we're going to look at is an LED. Uh, these are a little bit more complex, um, uh, but there are some videos knocking around on YouTube somewhere if you have a look, uh, search for how a LED works or how a PN junction, uh, so these contain something called a PN junction. So you can look that up if you want to know how they really work. Um, but what we see is on a current voltage graph we find that we can apply some voltage before anything actually starts happening. So what a, a, an LED or sp more generally a diode does is that it requires some given voltage before any uh, current will flow and so what we see is virtually no current, we do get a little bit of current flowing but practically nothing until some point where suddenly the current is able to flow and what we see is that once we get to that point where the current is able to flow we get an extremely low resistance and so given that the current is voltage divided by resistance a very low resistance means we're going to have a very steep gradient and so what we see is something like this. So not quite curving back on itself like that almost is, but what we see is uh, very little or practically no current flowing until we get to some point where the current starts to very rapidly increase. Uh, so at some given voltage the current suddenly starts to flow. Below that voltage we get nothing. Uh, but something else interesting also happens. So with the um, with the resistor if we expand these axes what we get is exactly the same shape that straight line continues out here what we get for the filament lamp is that we also get the shape from that mirror so we get the curving off like this oh sorry that should be voltage so current voltage graph we get this symmetrical this continuing of this straight line for the resistor for the filament lamp we get this curving up here and we also get this curving up here. So we get the gradient shallowing as we increase the voltage uh, either way. Um, and so these are um, polarity independent so it doesn't matter which way around you stick in a resistor or which way around you stick in a uh, filament lamp we still get the same result. What happens when we try and do this with a diode is not quite the same thing. So a diode turns out to depend on the polarity. So when we do this with a diode what we see is that again we get a very small to practically no gradient, uh, practically no current. So in this region here we get a very small current flowing through, but effectively there is no current. So this, this we would call a leakage current, whereas this is the uh, switching on voltage, this is the voltage in which the uh, diode allows current to flow, and then we suddenly have this massive spike in current as the uh, resistance drops down to virtually nothing so it's effectively the same as being a, a naked wire once we get to this point here. 
Uh, so these are the three really important shapes that we look at here. So we've got the straight line from the resistor, we've got this curving off due to the heating of the filament, so as the filament gets hotter we're increasing the resistance which gives us a shallower gradient due to the higher current. Uh, that's our filament lamp and the LED which does this really cool thing where it doesn't allow any current to flow until we get to some particular point when suddenly it offers virtually no resistance to the circuit and allows current to flow freely and in only one direction so whereas the filament lamp and the resistor allowed it to flow any way you like uh, here this uh, diode allows, it to allows the current to flow one way but the other way we get nothing. If we do apply a sufficiently large voltage eventually uh, we do have current flowing over here uh, but, uh, and that we call a breakdown voltage and essentially effectively means we've broken the LED um, or the diode if it's not a light emitting diode. Um, but that, that voltage, however far over here it is, is going to be much uh, larger in magnitude than this voltage here.